I welcome all of you to your favorite EduSat program. Dear students, from morning to go to your bed, we talk in our languages. While we talk in our languages, at that time either we use some words or sentences. Today's topic is different kinds of or different types of sentences. Before going to discuss about types of sentences, so what is a sentence in grammar? We should try to understand first. If we understand what is a sentence in grammar, then that will be easy for us to understand what are different types of sentences. So, in grammar, a sentence is the basic grammatical unity. It contains a group of words and expresses a complete thought. So, on the other words we can say sentence is a group of words having meaning. A sentence consists of a subject and a predicate. In your class 9th you have studied a sentence can be divided into two parts. One is subject part, the other is a predicate part. In a subject phase, there must be a noun. Besides noun, there are also some determiners. Which are the determiners you have already studied in your class 9? It may be article, it may be demonstrative, it may be possessive or quantifier or ordinal or cardinal numbers, adjectives. These words are used to as determiners in a noun phase. Similarly, in a predicate part, which one is important? The verb is important. Which verb? The finite verb. All of you know which verb is called finite verb? Usually, the verb which tells us about the tense of the sentence, that is called a finite verb. So, all these things make a sentence. So, a sentence consists of a subject and a predicate. Take one example. Adyanshi writes a good poem. Here in this sentence, Adyanshi is the subject and writes a good poem is the predicate and in this predicate part, writes is the verb. So, now you see a sentence consists of two parts. One is a subject part, the other is a predicate part. Before going to discuss say about to sentence vividly or properly. Now, you see on the screen there are some examples or there are some lines. In the first line fly, bird, sky in the. Can we say this is a sentence? Yes or no? We cannot say this is a sentence. Why? Because there are group of words, but it has no meaning. That means, it does not give us a complete thought. When it does not give us a complete thought, how can we say it is a, this is a sentence? So, this is not a sentence. So, the only the words are jumbled here. Similarly, come to the second line, knowledge, us, books, give. Like the first line, these words, there are four words in this line. But this word, these words does not give us a complete thought. So, we cannot say this is a sentence. Come to the third line, country, I, my, love, India. Like the first one and the second one, these are also the same thing. These are also the group of words, but uh, it does not give us uh, any meaning. So, we cannot say this is a sentence. Come to the fourth line, are, where, from, you. There are four words in this line, but this is also not a sentence, though it does not give us a, any complete thought. Similarly, the last or fifth one, the, the each, room, dirty, how. We cannot say this is a sentence, though it does not give us a any complete thought. So, now you please see what just now we discussed the group of 
the group of words in box, box A have no sense, have no meaning. So, we cannot say they are sentences. So, if we arrange them, those words are jumbled so that th they are not sentences, they do not give any complete thought. Then you see, this is the box B. In box A, we studied or we discussed there were some jumbled words. In box B, those, those words, those jumbled words are arranged in a specific order. Please you see, birds fly in the sky. We get complete thought, it, it gives us some meaning so that this is a sentence, birds fly in the sky. Similarly, the same words are in the line 2 like box 1, but uh, in line 2 those words are kept in a order. The order states, the meaning st states or the sentence says books gives us knowledge. So, book gives us knowledge is a sentence. Though these words are written in a specific order which gives us a meaning. And third one, I love my country India. This is also in this sentence, the same words are used like box 1, but it gives us some meaning. I love my country India. So, this is a sentence. Where are you from? This is also a sentence. It also gives us some meaning. So, the last one is how dirty the room is. Can we say this is a sentence? Yes. This is a sentence. So, now you see there are 5 sentences in box B. In all the sentences, the, the words are arranged in a proper order, it has some meaning. So, these are, these are sentences. So, if somebody asks you do the group of words have any meaning? Yes. Do they make a sense? Yes, these group of words are sentences. Okay? Then you see, why do we call them sentences? Because the words are arranged in a definite order. Then they give us a some meaning. And a, all the sentences have begun with a capital letter and a, ends with a full stop or a question mark or an exclamation mark. So, they are sentences. So, what we learn from these examples? We learn from these examples that a sentence begins with a capital letter and ends with a full stop or question mark or an exclamation mark. Then you see all these things, a group of words arranged in a specified or fixed order which make a complete sentence is called a sentence. It begins with a capital letter and ends with a full stop or a question mark or an exclamation mark. This is the definition of a, a sentence. Okay? Now, you see examples of a, some sentences. Here you see Mr. Amit Kumar is a lecturer. He teaches us geology. He has been teaching geology for the last 10 years. In these three examples, in the first example, Mr. Amit Kumar is the subject, when in the predicate part, is is the verb. And in the second sentence, he is the subject. And in the predicate part, teaches is the verb, or we can say that is finite verb though this verb tells us about the tense of the sentence. Similarly, come to the third example, he has been teaching geology for the last 10 years. Same he is the subject here, but here in the predicate part has been teaching is the verb here. But which one? Here in the verbal page, in the verbal group, there are three words. Which one is the finite verb? Hatch is the finite verb. 
so they are finitive verbs because they can be changed into past tense form all the the all the three verbs are written in present tense we can change them into past tense form so that they are called what they are called finite verbs so what we learnt what is a finite verb a finite verb is a verb that has a subject this means that it can be the main verb in a sentence it is shows a tense either past or present or number singular or plural take one example i live in goa my father is a government servant these are some examples here i live in goa i is the subject and live describes what the subject does so live is a verb and we can say this is the finite verb okay so we also can say finite verbs are often group of words that include such auxiliary verbs like can must have and a be take an example can be suffering he can be suffering he must eat i will have gun so finite verbs usually follow their subjects take here he coughs coughs is the finite verb so that though the subject is used as he then you see they will have gun here will have gun is the verb will is the finite verb so what we learn the verbs are of two types what you know one is a, one is a, one type of a verb are called auxiliary verbs and the others are main verbs auxiliary verbs are of two types what are they primary auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries and primary auxiliaries be have and do are called primary auxiliaries besides these three primary auxiliaries we have also some modal auxiliaries shall should can could will would may might must need they are these are all in present tense and a used to is used as in past tense it has no present tense okay so while we write while we write the sentences suppose in a verbal group if there is an auxiliary verb that auxiliary verb will tell us about the tense of the sentence here you see they will have gun they if we say they will have gun here will is the modal auxiliary no doubt but it also tells us about the tense of the sentence but there is another example he coughs here cough is not auxiliary verb it is the main verb so that now you think dear students which are finite verbs and a, which are auxiliary verbs you know so which are finite verb the verbs which tells us about the tense of the sentence that is called finite verb now you see some example prakash is a tucky person ashini works hard mr behra has been teaching english since 1989 in these sentences finite verbs are is prakash is a tucky person so is he is here finite verb ashini works hard works is here finite verb mr behra has been teaching english has been teaching has is the finite verb so that on the basis of the finite verbs we can say that all the above sentences have each a finite clause so what is a clause if we don't know or if you don't understand what is a clause we cannot uh, say or we, we cannot know what is a sentence so at least we should know the difference between a clause and a sentence a clause is a group of related words 
that contains a subject as well as a verb like a sentence. It is a meaningful combination of words as it can alone express a complete thought. It can also be said that each sentence consists of at least one clause. So, a clause may be a sentence, but all the sentences in all the sentences we can find at least one clause. It may be more than one clause. Suppose take one example Lulu loved. If we take the example Lulu loved, this is a sentence no doubt. Why? Lulu is the subject here, loved is the verb here. If we divide this sentence, one can be subject and the other will be predicate. So, Lulu loved is a sentence no doubt, it is also a clause, it is also a clause. Then you see what are different types of a sentences in English grammar. In English grammar, we use or while we talk, while we write, we use different types of a sentences. These are there are four types of a sentences in English. What are they? Not only in English, even also in your language Odia there are also four types of sentences. But in English we can hear though we are reading English. So, in English there are four types of sentences. What are they? Simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence. In your English textbook, English grammar textbook, there are three types of sentences, simple, compound, complex. But besides that, there is also another type of a, there is also another type of a sentence that is called compound complex sentence. Okay? So, now dear students, let us go and discuss about one activity of your English book. You have perhaps I think you have English book with you. Now, please look at your book page number 13. There is one activity and uh, dear students, we shall do that uh, activity and what is that activity in your textbook? Please open your book. Dear students, what instruction is given in activity 1? In activity 1, instruction is given, pick out the finite verbs from the sentences given in the exercise. The first one is Nilima has a good memory. Nilima has a good memory. Dear students, what is our work here? We have to identify or the select which one is the finite verb. Here you see Nilima is the subject, this is subject and this part of sentence is called predicate and there is only one verb in the predicate part, verb is the most important one. So, which one is the verb? Has. So, has is the verb and uh, it tells us that the tense of the sentence, the sentence is in present tense. Why? Because you know has has the past tense form had. So, that this is tense verb or we can say this is finite verb. So, what is the, what was the instruction? Pick out the finite verb. So, here has is the finite verb. Okay. Please come to the second example. He shall not enter the house. He shall not enter the house.
here you see he is the subject which one which one is the verb shall not enter is the verbal phase and in this verbal phase which one is the finite verb or shall is here finite verb though it tells us about the tense of the sentence what is the tense of this sentence shall is in present tense because it has the past form should so that this is the shall is the finite verb similarly come to the third question we have not a yet received the money we have not yet the money this is one sentence here you see we is the subject and here the predicate is have not yet received the money which one is the verb have not yet received which one is the finite verb or which tells us about the tense of the sentence that is have so have is in the finite form or have is the finite verb please come to the next question he has been studying to pass the examination he has been studying to pass the examination or exam here you see please the same thing he is the subject and uh, has been studying to pass the exam is a predicate has been studying is the verb or verbal phase and has is here finite verb because it tells us the sentence is in present tense and has has the past tense form that is had and the fifth one is what Ramesh works in a bank. Ramesh works in a bank. Which one is the subject here? Ramesh. And works in a bank is the predicate. And works is the verb. And there is only one verb that is works. And it tell, this tells us about the tense of the sentence. The sentence is in present tense. Though Ramesh is a singular number third person, so the verb works is used in present tense. Okay, this is finite verb. And the sixth number six of the last one of uh, activity one, we must obey the rules of the road. we must obey the rules of the road you see here we is the subject must obey the rules of the road is the predicate must obey is the verb and a must must tells us about the tense of the sentence it is in present tense just uh, i have already told you must has present form it has no past tense form this is a this is an modal this is a modal auxiliary so that this tells us about the tense of the sentence so this is the finite verb dear students we discussed the activity one okay now you see before just uh, what we studied now a sentence can be divided into three types or first we can divide into two types one is simple the other is multiple 
the multiple sentences can be divided into compound and a complex. So, what is the structure of a simple sentence? A simple sentence consists of one independent clause. We have discussed already what is a clause. Take one example here, students like a Jusat program. This is a simple sentence. Why this is a simple sentence? Though it is only one clause and this clause is independent clause. So, how can we identify a clause? At first, we should look at which one is the finite verb in the sentence. Students like a Jusat program, in this sentence like is the finite verb, so that there is only one finite verb in this sentence. When there is only one finite verb in the sentence, we can say this is a, this is there is only one clause and this clause is also independent. What do you mean by independent? If somebody says students like a Jusat program, the meaning is the meaning gives us a complete sense. Though we get a complete sense from the sentence, so that this is a simple sentence. So, what is independent clause? Just now we discussed an independent clause contains a subject and a verb and express a complete thought. Okay? Then you see a sentence which consists of only one clause that can stand by itself is called a sentence. Examples of a simple sentence structure. My father likes coffee. This is a simple sentence. My mother is fond of tea. This is a simple sentence. The sun rises in the sky. This is a simple sentence. Mr. Das did not teach English essay. This is a simple sentence. Why? Because in example 1, likes is only one finite verb and it gives a complete sense. My mother is fond of tea, is gives us a complete sense. The sentence gives us a complete sense. Is is only one finite verb. So, this is a simple sentence. Similarly, rises is only one finite verb. The sun rises in the east gives us a complete sense. So, this is also a simple sentence. Similarly, Mr. Das did not teach English essay. So, did not teach is the verb, but did is the finite verb. It gives us a complete sense, complete meaning. So, that this is a simple sentence. Okay? Then you see please, what is the structure of a compound sentence? Because I have told you the sentences are of a four types. One is a simple sentence, the other is a compound sentence and a, the next one is a complex sentence and another is a compound complex sentence. Okay? And a, now we have to discuss about the structure of a compound sentence. Among the four types of a sentences, we discuss the simple sentences. Let us discuss what is a compound sentences or what is the structure of a compound sentences. In a compound sentence, two or more independent clauses are joined by conjunction or semicolon. Each of these clauses could form a sentence alone. So, examples of a compound sentences, I like fish and Bini likes meat. Here you see, in this example, we have two finite verbs. Here, I like fish, like is the finite verb and Bini likes meat, here likes is also finite verb. These two actually, if we divide this sentence, we can get two sentences and we can get two complete sentences. I like fish, this is one, Bini likes meat, that is another one and these two sentences have been joined by conjunction or coordinator. Which one is the conjunction here or coordinator and is here coordinator. That means, that coordinated two sentences, one is I like fish and Bini likes meat. So, this is a compound sentence and because 
we discussed in a compound sentence two or more independent clauses are joined by a conjunction or semicolon each of these clauses could form a sentence alone similarly take another example manasi went to the work but sikanta went to the party here you see there are two clauses here why there are two finite verbs manasi went to the work here went his finite verb srikanta went to the pirate party there is also another went here so there are two clauses and the, these two clauses have been joined by but conjunction but so this is a compound sentence similarly come to the third example our bros boss broke down we came last that means on the way our boss broke down we came last here there are two finite verbs one is broke down the another is came but uh, you see here there is no conjunction here how these two clauses have been joined these two clauses have been joined by a colon mark or semicolon mark semicolon mark so that we can say these are all compound sentences and here you see what is the structure of a complex sentence we discussed what we discussed simple sentence we discussed a compound sentence so now you see what is the structure of a complex sentence a complex sentence consists of an independent clause plus a dependent clause here perhaps i think you are in trouble to understand what is a dependent clause we because we have already discussed what is independent clause we have not discussed about dependent clause so let us go and discuss about dependent clause a dependent clause starts with a subordinating conjunction or a relative pronoun and contains a subject and a verb but does not express a complete thought that means the sendi clause which does not give us complete meaning or complete thought it depends upon another clause we can say that is a dependent clause or that dependent clause is called subordinate clause okay then you see please some examples of a complex sentences we missed our plane because we are late because we we are late not are late we we are late here you see there are two finite verbs one is missed and another is we are we missed our plane this is sentence is independent clause why this one is independent because it is it is understood completely it gives a complete meaning so that this is a this is an independent clause similarly come to the next one because we are late if somebody entered into your class and said because we are late what you will understand you cannot understand from this part of the sentence why because it does not give any complete meaning so that it does not give any complete thought so that this is a dependent clause or a subordinate clause already we have discussed which is sentences are complex sentences if a sentence has at least one independent clause and one dependent clause that sentence is called complex sentence come to the next example our dog barks when she hears a noise here you see there are two finite verbs one is barks other is hears so there are two finite verbs so we can divide a, this this sentence into two clauses the first one is our dog barks this is the independent clause it gives a complete thought or complete meaning but the second one when she hears a noise if somebody says when she hears a noise it does not gives a complete meaning or complete thought so that this is a subordinate clause or a dependent clause though there is one independent clause and a dependent clause in this is sentence and the sentences are joined by a coordinator 
or a relative pronoun when so that this is a what this is a complex sentence. Please come to another example. He left in a hurry after he got a phone call. Here you see left is the finite verb and got is the finite verb. These two sentences, the two clauses have been joined by after. So, he left in a hurry is a an independent clause and he got a phone clause call is a dependent clause. So, this is a complex sentence. Do you know the man who is talking to Mary? Here you see do is the finite verb. Though no do and no are verb, but do is the finite verb in the first clause. In the second clause who is talking to Mary? Is talking is the verb, but is is the finite verb. So, there are two clauses in this sentence. If somebody ask you do you know the man? It is understood this is a this gives us complete thought. So, this is an independent clause. Similarly, who is talking to Mary? Who is here relative pronoun? So, that this is a, a subordinate clause and a, we can say this is also a complex sentence. So, now you see I have already told you really the sentences as per your textbook there are three types of sentences, but I have added another one that is for your that is for your information or to gather some extra knowledge what is the structure of a compound complex sentence that is a sentence that is called compound complex sentence that is not in your textbook. A compound complex sentence consists of at least two independent clauses and one more dependent clauses. At least there should be two independent clauses or one or more dependent clauses we can say that is compound complex sentence. So, take some example Prabhakar did not come because he was ill. So, Vaidyanath was not happy. Prabhakar did not come here you see this is one independent clause. Vaidyanath was not happy that is another independent clause, but there is one another there is one dependent clause because he was ill. Because he was ill is a dependent clause so that this is called compound complex sentence. Take another example Manmath left in a hurry after he got a phone call, but he came back 5 minutes later. Here you see Manmath left in a hurry this is the independent clause and a, he came back 5 minutes later this is also independent clause, but after he got a phone call this is a dependent clause. So, these two examples are from compound complex sentences. So, now you see we discussed about four types of a sentences and after that we shall discuss about a simple sentence briefly ok. Dear students, we discussed about four types of students. What are they? Now, you perhaps I think you know very well. One is a simple sentence, the second one is a compound sentence, the third one is a complex sentence, fourth one is a compound complex sentence. And the simple sentences are of a four types. What are the four types of a simple sentences? Let us discuss. The first one is declarative and the second one is interrogative sentence and the third one is imperative sentence and the fourth one is exclamatory sentences. So, which sentences are called declarative sentences? The sentences which states about facts or which gives information, we can say that is a declarative sentence. Take the example, Navin Patnaik is the chief minister of Odisha, this is a declarative sentence. Similarly, you can take another example, my father works in Kolkata, this is also a declarative sentence. In similar manner, we can discuss 
some other examples we can take which are declarative sentences the cuckoo is singing here you see this is declarative sentence but another example here you see is the cuckoo singing in that tree this is not a declarative sentence why this is a question though question mark is not there but uh, it is understood this is also this is a an interrogative sentence then you see listen to the cuckoo sing this is an imperative sentence we can discuss all this here after now you see how beautiful how beautifully the cuckoo sings this is all this is an exclamatory sentence so simple sentences are of four types these are the examples are given here for you then you see which one is a declarative sentence declarative sentences are simply statements that relay information they are the most common type of a sentences in the english language a declarative sentence states the facts or an opinion and uh, lets the reader know something specific it is always ends with a period so this is called declarative sentence here you see some examples of a declarative sentences our school begins at 10 o'clock this is a declarative sentence it gives some facts it gives some information mr mahanti teaches us english the same thing it also gives some information it is state something sangeeta opened the door so this is also declarative sentence i get up early this is regular habit this is a regular habit and also declarative sentence we work and play at a school this is another example of a declarative sentence because these five examples declare facts so they are called statements all the statements are called declarative sentence then you see declarative sentences have some patterns that is called basic pattern of a declarative sentences here you see how the how we write the declarative sentences we write the declarative sentences like this these are the pattern of a declarative sentences two examples are given for one structure the first uh, structure is subject plus a verb structure the child loved birds fly here two examples have been given for you the child is the subject loved is the verb birds is the subject fly is the verb so these two examples are from declarative sentences then another pattern of a declarative sentence is subject plus a verb plus a object pattern now you see some examples the postman gave a parcel the postman is the subject gave is the verb and you know a parcel is the object why you ask wh question to the verb if you get the answer one object then you will then you can get the object the postman gave what did the postman give a parcel the boy wrote an essay what did the boy write an essay so here you see wrote is the verb and a, an essay is the object so the boy is the subject so this pattern is called svo pattern then you see s plus v plus o plus o subject verb indirect object then direct object here there are some examples for you his father bought him a bicycle his father bought him a bicycle this is this is the subject verb indirect object and direct object pattern generally 
the nouns the nouns uh, speaks about to direct object and a personal pronouns personal pronouns so him is here indirect object if you ask what question to the bot bar bot you can get the answer a bicycle what did his father buy a bicycle so him is his father bought him a bicycle him is indirect object and you see another example <coughs> uncle gave me a laptop here you see uncle is the subject verb is gave means the object a laptop is a direct object means the indirect object this pattern is called subject verb indirect object and a direct object pattern and another pattern is a subject verb plus complement pattern or s v s plus v plus c pattern here you see what is complement usually after be verb after sim verb after appear verb we use complement or a noun that that completes the sentence mr ratha is a doctor here this pattern is a subject verb complement pattern the fish is cheap here the fish is subject is is verb cheap is the complement if i say the fish is cheap you cannot understand anything because this is an incomplete sentence but if i say the fish is an aqua aquatic animal then you can understand the fish is cheap you can understand this is so cheap is here complement another pattern here you see this is called subject plus a verb plus object plus a complement pattern please here you look some example we have proved him wrong here we is the subject have a proved is the verb and him is the object and wrong is the complement if i say we have proved to him the sentence is not complete if we say we have a proved him wrong the sentence is a complete sentence they elected mr choudhury chairman they is the subject elected is the verb mr choudhury is the object and a chairman is the complement so dear students we discussed about to five patterns of a declarative sentence so now you see underline the finite verbs and pick out the simple sentences here there is an activity for you the weather was cold please you see first of all you identify the finite verb which one is the finite verb what is the finite verb so that this is the finite verb and there is only one finite verb this sentence is a complete sentence so we can say this is a simple sentence they elected him secretary of the club here there is only one finite verb elected so elected is the finite verb the sentence gives us a complete meaning so this is also a simple sentence ravi is playing but his brother is working here you see there are two finite verbs is and is is playing and is working so this is not a simple sentence these two sentences or these two clauses have been joined by but so this is a this is a coordinator so this is a compound sentence this is not a simple sentence i have bought a watch which is shows the debt here you see have a bought is the verb but have is the finite verb similarly shows is another verb we can say that is also finite verb there are two finite verbs in this sentence so here you see i have bought a watch this is independent but which is shows debt this is this clause is not independent this is a, a dependent clause so that we can say this is a complete complex sentence though one is independent the other is dependent clause please come to the next uh, question they have been studying for 2 hours here you see they have been studying for 2 hours here there is a verbal group or verbal phase that is have been studying 
but the half is only one finite verb. So, this is a simple sentence. Then come to the next one, the guide showed us a temple which is touched our heart. Here you see there are two finite verbs, one is showed, another is touched. These two, so there are two clauses, these two clauses have been joined by the coordinator which the guide showed us a temple which touched our heart. This is a subordinate clause or a dependent clause. So, this is a complex sentence, not a simple sentence. Come to next one, the flower smells sweet. Here there is only one finite verb that is a smells. So, smells gives us a complete meaning. So, smells is a finite verb. We can say this is a complete sentence, this is a simple sentence. I reached at the station when the train was going to leave. Here you see there are two finite verbs reached and a was and a I reached at the station is independent when the train was going to leave is a dependent clause. So, this is a complex sentence. Dear students, today we discussed what types of a sentences. There are four types of a sentences, simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence and compound complex sentences. Simple sentences are of four types. What are they? Declarative sentence and a imperative sentence, interrogative sentence and a exclamatory sentences. So, I think all these things will help you. So, it will be better if you read and if you do the all the task from your textbook, you can get better knowledge and today we have discussed lots of uh, things about uh, different uh, types of uh, sentences. So, I think that will uh, it will help you for your better betterment uh, 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 in English, it is no doubt. So, and uh, after that uh, in the next session, you will have to read about uh, the other two simple, uh, besides uh, two sentences, we discussed about uh, simple sentences properly and uh, we have left a uh, compound and a uh, complex. So, in next session, you will read these two compound and a uh, complex sentences properly. Okay? Thank you. Thank you to all of you.